Welcome to Kelsey's Kitchen of what I eat in a week. And these are just some foods that I love to make. And this is really over the course of four to five days. And I often meal prep, so I make everything in big batches. And it's just me eating, so it's fine. I just eat like I'm eating for eight people. And I just wanna film a quick intro, so enjoy the video. I forgot I was supposed to commentate what I'm eating. I already finished half of it and it's been three minutes. But I got shoyu and spicy pokey from my favorite place that's just up the street. It's like Hawaiian pokey. It's not like the pokey bowls where you add everything. But it's so good. Like, it's my second time getting it this week. And this is also the first day I've left my apartment since Monday. Like, literally, I haven't even opened my apartment door. So it was a nice venture into the fresh air. Um, I got avocado. I got spam musubi. I know I'm gonna make some spicy mayo to put on the spam musubi too. It's still warm too. I love spam. I could eat spam every day, but obviously it's like really bad for you. Um, they didn't give me a lot of fish this time, which kind of sucks, but it's really good still. Would recommend to anyone who visits Hermosa or Redondo. I've been in Kelsey's kitchen. We are going to make Japanese curry with chicken, carrots, and mushrooms today. Would we'll normally add broccoli and onions, but I don't have any broccoli and I only have red onions. And I feel like red onions are more for salads and are supposed to be eaten raw. And I have a bag of six, so I don't really know what I'm supposed to do with that. But yes, that is the recipe we're making for dinner today. I had pokey for lunch, so it's a lot of rice on rice, but I went on a one mile run, so I hope that kind of counteracts it. But let's go on this cooking journey, day one. Okay, I've never done a voiceover before, but I'm trying to do this as fast as I can. So we're cutting up the carrots right now and putting them into boiling water so we can steam them. We gotta wash our rice. I've never made rice till this year, but I'm using basmati because that's my favorite. Doesn't really go Japanese curry, but it's okay. And now we're putting the carrots in ready to be steamed and getting the mushrooms ready to be sauteed and cutting up the chicken for the curry. I baked the chicken beforehand. It's just boneless from Costco. Cracking some eggs to make some scrambled eggs and look at that one-handed crack. I've totally mastered it. I've been practicing for like months and we're putting in the steamed carrots and mushrooms to saute the rice got a little fucked up and now the curry's done today i kind of messed up the rice because i didn't know there was a difference in cooking times for basmati and jasmine and now it looks like mush but there's nothing like lots of curry sauce can't solve so hopefully it's fine um just i need to fix the rice for next time try the chicken curry i put some flour in to thicken the sauce and then it got really ugly it looks like it has chicken pox because there were clumps of flour and i overcooked the egg I made scrambled eggs but i wanted to be like all soft and fluffy and also obviously messed up the rice so we'll see but here it is probably will burn my oh my god oh my god i got curry on my shirt <sighs> whatever Rice isn't as bad as I thought. Chicken's good. Not very spicy. I'm gonna add some cayenne pepper. Oh shit. Oh my god, there's sauce all over me. Okay. Well, overall, it was okay. Needs more spice. Welcome to Kelsey's Kitchen part two. We're gonna make the spicy vodka rigatoni. That's from like John and Vinny, it's the Gigi Hadid, Bon Appetit recipe. And then I also use one based on Not Another Cooking Show. He's this really cool YouTuber who does a lot of good pasta videos. I recommend. Basically, when I try recipes, I look at like 50 different videos at the middle of the night. Therefore, I really want to eat the next day. And I kind of combine all the elements that I do have or elements that I like that are easy and just combine them all to make like the best pasta dish I can get. And I've nicely laid out my ingredients, which I never do. And it's only for this video. And you'll need... Um, a shallot and this one's like a huge one they usually come much smaller but like I'll just use a whole one anyway as I like 
a lot of onions and garlic because I can't really taste a lot of things unless there's a lot of it and again like I added an entire garlic but some people only like a few which I don't understand because why would you have a few like cloves when you can have the whole thing and parsley I recently finally understand like the greatness of not seasonings but like garnishes I used to not think like oh those don't give any value like what a waste of money but parsley and basil are actually really important for pasta so I have a bit of parsley and I bought some basil and then a chunk of butter oh uh, not that much but I'm just gonna use the rest of it because I like butter and then cream unhealthy parmesan unhealthy going against my no dairy for this week and some tomato paste that's gonna give it the red and I have some rigatoni shape I really like shapes for pasta like that and bow tie I've always been like my kid favorite except I never liked the Kraft mac and cheese like spongebob shapes I don't know I thought it was like a weird texture um but we're gonna get started first you want to get all your ingredients ready and we're gonna cut up the shallot and the garlic I'm just doing an entire garlic because why not and I love garlic and the shallot also makes you cry just like a red onion so be beware and we're cutting up the basil and the parsley to get ready to garnish and you want to do it finely diced I want to show off my always pan. I got it from Josh and Justin for my birthday. Thank you. It's basically a like seven in one pan and it's super non-stick. It comes with um, a steamer and this really nice spatula and obviously it's pink and really cute and aesthetic. So we're going to start making the pasta in here now. As Molly says from Bon Appetit, you want your water to be as salty as the ocean. And now we're putting in the um, shallots and the garlic to saute with some olive oil. And you want to do it for like five minutes. And then you squeeze in like half a tube of tomato paste. And you want to cook that until it's like brick, br uh, brick red. And then you just pop in some vodka. I don't really measure anything. I just toss it in. And same with the cream. I just put in as much as I want or how little. And then you really want to smash around the tomato paste so the red goes around. And I forgot to include red chili flakes in the original picture, but you want to add that. And now we're putting the chopped basil and tons of Parmesan cheese. Freshly grated. It mainly makes a big difference. And you want to let it simmer for a long time so the sauce is thick. So thick that when you push your spatula through it, it kind of stays in shape just like this, and it should be a beautiful vodka saucy red. And now you're gonna put in the pasta, and you always wanna save pasta water, so you can put it in, it's called liquid gold by Bon Appetit, whatever. But anyways, it emulsifies, which makes the sauce really creamy, and I always put more, because I want it to be as liquidy and saucy as possible, and you really wanna shake and move the pan, and also put butter to add gloss, more cheese, and more parsley. I put on more cheese, obviously, let's see. Mm, it's really good. Except I think I put too much salt, um, either in the sauce or in the pasta. But overall, there you go. Spicy vodka rigatoni, really easy. It's really fast, honestly, too. Um, and it's great as leftovers. I made two portions, even though it's just me here, but I always eat two portions anyway, so enjoy. We're having a round two, obviously, because I don't want to deal with the leftovers, but... Yummy! That sounded cringe. I'm sorry. Also, my face looks really red and oily. Whatever. But I hope it's still kind of warm. But I also have to say, I just washed the... Um, God, I have oil on my hand. I just washed the oil, the always pan, and it really is nonstick. Like, I just sprayed it with water and everything came off. So, would recommend. Welcome to Kelsey's Kitchen Part 3. We're going to be making the chili today. Um, I forgot to buy a habanero pepper, but I feel like I could just add an extra jalapeno. Um, sorry, I just showered for my run, so my hair is sopping wet, but we're gonna get started. I've never made chili in my entire life before. I've only eaten it at Johnny Rockets, which is so good, Two at Felipe's, which is like not how you're supposed to say it, but that's how his, my dad calls it that. So that's the one in downtown LA in Chinatown. So good. It's literally just beef. And then the third is from the can, but it's so good too. Like I just put tons of cheddar cheese. Um, but today we're gonna make a turkey, lots of veggie chili, and hopefully it turns out good. I'm wearing gloves because once I had hot pepper hands and my hands felt like they were on fire and I dipped them in yogurt all night. So that's why I'm wearing gloves. And now we're cutting up the citrus fruits to put into the sauce for the chili. And I prepped a lot of this the night before because I was bored and it looks professional. And now we're putting the olive oil and doing the turkey first. 99% lean ground turkey from tar tar Trader Joe's or Target. And now we're putting in all the seasonings. There's a fuck ton. So make sure to read the list. 
and you basically put in as much as you want like two tablespoons four tablespoons who cares and now we're putting the crushed tomatoes and chicken stock and you want to let it all simmer and get all but it's probably gonna overflow after you put in all these veggies so i would get a bigger pot because this is only one i have obviously but a bigger pot would make it a lot better look okay, how beautiful that is kind of okay we're kind of already facing issues here because the pot is overflowing um but I've put in all the vegetables and I still have to open the can of beans and it took me 15 minutes to open the can of tomatoes because I can't open practical things. Um, we'll keep you updated, but just stirring now. And I kind of guessed all the spices like amounts, so I hope it's enough, but I guess I could always add more later. The chili is simmering for 30 minutes, occasionally stirring now, and then we'll just wait and see how it turns out. It smells pretty decent right now, though. Snack time! I'm eating baby carrots and hummus that looks like a fresh pile of shit, but I'm excited! And I know it's weird, but I like to cut my baby carrots in half because I like skinny carrots, and um... Then you kind of get more bang for your buck because you get like what three baby carrots but then you cut into halves so you get six and it lasts longer and you get more hummus and i'm mostly eating this because i want the hummus not the carrots <laughs> Some things about the chili. Um, it's not very thick and I've been reducing or simmering it for about an hour now and I guess it's just not gonna be very thick chili which is fine and the let's well the initial taste test again it wasn't very thick but it was pretty good so here's one again final review it tastes like real chili i think i might have put too much cumin in because i don't even know i've never even used cumin in anything i've made but i i smelled it and it kind of tastes like it so i might have put too much but i think it was oh shit did i just spill some i think it was a success like a six out of ten i'll be real like the first time i usually make a recipe it's very bad like I made lasagna once and it tasted like nothing and everyone pretended like it tasted good because it was my birthday, but I know it wasn't good. Unless you put piles of cheese on it. But um, yeah, this is, I think will last me the whole week, maybe two days, we'll see. And um, yeah, you guys should try to make it or you can just find your own recipe. But this is again, just showing you what I eat in a week and how this is like my meal prep. Um, since it's, it has a lot of veggies in it, and it's, then it's like, I don't need to cook all the time. I can just microwave it and eat it. I might go to Trader Joe's to get some cheese because it's really missing some yummy, unhealthy stuff. Welcome to the fourth installment of Kelsey's Kitchen and we're about to make the best brownies you'll ever have in your entire life, especially if you eat them fresh baked and burnt your tongue. Preheat the oven to 350 degrees, get your ingredients ready, guess which half of the butter we're using, and now we're dumping a ton of sugar, melting the sugar with butter in a pan until it's all dissolved. Also cracking two eggs, mixing the leftover sugar, and you want to whisk, 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 put in the melted butter slowly, which I did not do, but it doesn't really matter, I think. And now we're putting in the flour, the cocoa powder, baking soda, salt, and mixing, and you put in as many chocolate chips as you want. I usually put in half a bag, and now we're dumping the batter into a square pan with parchment paper. And look at that. And now you want to shake it out to make sure it's flat and you put it in the oven and wait. We're going to test the brownies right now. Let's see. They're very gooey. They might need a few more minutes. Okay, I may have overcooked it because I put it in the oven for like five or eight additional minutes. Um, I was just worried because it was so gooey, but it tastes really good. And it's also honestly not that sugary because I put in a ton of sugar. We're just gonna let it rest until I cut it up more and then I'll take a picture of it. Mm -hmm. 